Hello, I'm an old Norse scholar, and uh, among other things, I do the maritime aspects of the old Norse text. So I did consider to give a boat uh, paper at this conference, um, but I didn't. Uh, so, but if you're interested, you can see a sample of my maritime work hanging on the uh, the um, poster stand next door. What I did select for uh, this paper is um, a topic within a history of religion and um, folklore, combining um, information from Old Norse texts and um, one of the, the Norse words that survived in Shetland and Orkney until the 20th century. Um. I did my uh, PhD on uh, Gander. In, all, uh, in Old Norse and other Nordic traditions. And uh, derivations um, of uh, Gandr. And one of those uh, derivations um, seems to be Gandfer, which is found here in Shetland and, and Orkney. I'll give you a brief introduction to the material before I present uh, my questions. Here from uh, Shetland, Gunther, a phenomenon in the sky, um, portending bad weather, and it looks like um, a mock sun, or a stump of a rainbow, or a halo around the moon or sun, indicating rain. Um, and it can also be a cracking sound in the atmosphere, considered as an ominous portent. And it can be a ghost or a person's double. And here we see from Orkney. Also there, an atmospheric sign or phenomenon um, seen in, in, in the sky, betokening bad weather. And it looks like a halo around the sun or moon, or a mock sun, um, also called a parhelion, that's the same, or a patch of rainbow-colored sky, or the isolated stump of a rainbow. And it can be a ghost, and it can be any supernatural phenomenon. By the way, I have a handout with uh, the main material. But it's not for all of you, so you have to share with your neighbor, several of you. So, as we can see, the meanings uh, of Gunford in, uh, in Shetland and Orkney are very similar. The main difference is that Orkney does not have uh, the meaning cracking sound in the atmosphere. Jakobsen, who did the collection here in Shetland, reconstructed Gunther as Old Norse Gandferd. And um, he argued that it's the same word as Northern Norwegian Gunnfar, which was written by the Norwegian dialect collector Ivar Åsen as Gandferd. And the meaning in Northern Norway of this Gandferd is a host of witches or evil spirits believed to ride in the air. And it's the same as the Julereia, Juleskreia, uh, Oskoreia, so the, the wild hunt, hunt, raging hunt which we found, uh, find throughout Northern Europe. And he um, connected um, Gunther with old Icelandic Gandreid, uh, especially the version described in the, the saga, um, saga, Njol's saga. And uh, many scholars has, uh, have supported that uh, connection. And here we see the um, account in, in Njal Saga. There was um, 
a young man called Hilde Glumer, and he lived in southwestern Iceland. And he went outside one night in autumn, and then he heard a tremendous crash, and the earth and the sky seemed to quiver. He looked to the west and thought he saw a ring of fire with a man on a gray horse inside the circle riding furiously. He rushed past Hilde Glumer with a blazing firebrand held aloft. And Hilde Glumer heard him roaring out. I ride a horse with icy mane, forelock dripping, evil bringing with fire at each end and poison in the middle. Flossie's plants are like this flying firebrand. Flossie's plants are like this flying firebrand. Flossie is, is a character in the saga and he's involved in, in a conflict going on. And the rider hurled the firebrand east towards the mountains. A vast fire erupted, blotting the mountains from sight. And Hilde Glomer fainted and lay unconscious for a long time. And then later on, he went to a certain Hjaltis Gegerson and, and told him about this. And Hjaltis said, you have seen the Gandreith. And that is always a portent of disaster. My questions. Firstly, what is the precise relationship between Gandreith and Njold Saga? and Gunfer. The similarity pointed out by the scholars is only that in both, ca both cases there's a super supernatural riding in the sky. But the riding in the sky in, in Gunfer, it, it's, it's not there in, in the um, collected meaning of, of Gunfer. The, the supernatural riding is only fi found in the Norwegian form, the northern Norwegian form, the Gunfer. Gunfer. However, if we take a closer look at the weather phenomena that Gunther referred to, um, it turns out that the connection between Gunther and Gandreth is indeed very close, but in a different way. And secondly, how can we understand the connection between the meanings of uh, Gandther? Nobody has tried to explain that relationship. And when you look at that list, then for a 21st century Westerner, the connection is not an obvious one. And um, Jakobsen actually uh, separated the ghost and person's second meaning um, and, and listed those meanings as a different word. But um, as I'll try to demonstrate, there's no need to split Gunther in two. Here is what the uh, Gandreth vision in Njol Saga consists of. It's uh, the tremendous crash, the ring of fire in the sky, and, and the man inside it with the firebrand. And it's the ominous portent, and uh, the connection to bad weather and the word. This is the weather phenomenon. This is a gunfit. There's a halo and the sun in the middle and uh, there's one mock sun on each, on, uh, on each side and even one above uh, the sun. The above one is uh, somewhat unusual. More usual is what we see here. Uh, one mock sun on each side of the real sun. And here uh, is um, one example um, where the mock sun looks like a stump of a rainbow, which we remember as one of the meanings of Gunther. Then we can make a full comparison of uh, Gandreid in Njol Saga and Gunther. Both motives uh, contain a cracking sound, a ring looking like fire in the sky. It's an ominous portent and 
it's connected to bad weather. And the literal meanings of the words are very similar. It's gant travel and gant ride. And it's even possible to see a model for the firebrand uh, in the middle here, because in, in some cases there's this vertical beam of light, uh, which is located where the rider in, in the Icelandic um, story would be holding the firebrand aloft. So, um, if we um, really look into the, the weather phenomenon, uh, the connection between Gandres in Njalsaga and, and Gandfer in Shetland Orkney is, is very close. So, I would say an, an, there's an obvious uh, connection. And then there's a question about the, the, um, the reasoning behind this. And, um, well, why uh, has a vision like this been, been understood in this way? Well, uh, regarding the, the ominous um, portent, a vision like this um, actually is ominous in the sense that it is usually followed by a storm or gale. That's because in this part of the world, uh, parhelia are usually seen when a low pressure system is approaching. The light phenomena are caused by the sun shining on ice crystals high up in the atmosphere, and this is a very early warning of, of the storm or, or gale approaching. The Parhelian phenomenon is uh, the background of the Old Norse myth of um, the two wolves that follow uh, the sun across the sky, mentioned in the, the Eddic poems uh, Grimnes Mål and Volusbo, and, and also in, in Snorri, uh, by Snorri in Snorreida. Um, and this connection is not my idea, it's been pointed, pointed out by, by several scholars, but I have the impression that it's not very well known. Okay, um, the wolf behind um, the sun in the Old Norse uh, sources was believed to be trying to swallow uh, the sun, which is illustrated here. And in Ragnarok, uh, the final battle, uh, the wolf succeeds in, in swallowing the sun, apparently, at least the, the sun disappears. In the background of, of this sun swallowing idea, um, it can be partly the um, uh, parhelion weather phenomenon, because uh, when a parhelion is seen, usually the sun disappears not long after because of the, the storm coming in. Uh, and uh, another part of the background can be uh, solar eclipses. So it can be a combination of that. In any way, Fossilized reflections of the myth of, of the uh, sun and the wolves have survived throughout Northern Europe until modern times. In parts of Denmark, parhelia are known as sol ulver, sun wolves. And uh, the English term sun dog uh, probably has the same uh, origin, it refers to the same uh, phenomenon. And in Iceland, um, there are different terms for the uh, sun dog behind the sun and um, the one ahead of it or to the right of it when we look at it. We have to remember that the sun moved to the right. In, in the northern hemisphere, when we look at the sun, it moves to the right. So there is a wolf um, or a sun dog uh, behind it and one in front of it. And then in Icelandic, the one behind it is referred to as an ulver, a wolf, whereas the one in front of it is referred to as a gitl. Gitl spelled like that, and uh, in Norway um, it can be referred to as yil or sol yil or sol yissel, sol yixel, uh, which are forms of the same word as the Icelandic one. And all these words are um, related to Old Norse geisli, which means a ray, and um, geisl, which means a staff. 
which fits well if we look at the, the variant, uh, the stump of a rainbow variant of, of uh, parhelion. And the reason why in Icelandic it's the, 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 the mock sun behind the sun, which is referred to as a wolf, um, I guess it's because uh, that one is the chasing one. So it's logical that that one will finally catch up and, and swallow the sun. Um, and in the Old Norse sources, um, the, the one ahead of the sun is going to swallow the moon. So, a different idea. Now, why did the, the Norse use compounds with um, the term gandr when referring to parhelia, um, portending bad weather and disasters? That question has never been asked before. I'll give you my answer in several steps. And that will also be the answer to the question of the um, connection between the different forms of Ganfer in Shetland and Orkney. The first part of my answer, one meaning of Gandr in Old Norse is wolf. So Gandr could mean wolf in Old Norse. So accordingly when, well in that case, when you see a wolf crossing the sky, it's logical to refer to that as a gand travel, or a gand, a gand ferd. Why then could wolves be referred to as gandar? In order to answer that, um, we have to take a look at what gandar meant in Old Norse. And here we see the, the essence of that. A Gandr in Old Norse um, was a soul, or the essence of Gandr was a soul or spirit sent forth by a sorcerer, ritual specialist, and often in the shape of an animal. And the purpose would be to get information about the future or about distant places, or uh, to fetch or uncover wanted or hidden things or to fight other spiritual beings or humans. Now, wolves were very uh, popular spirit animals. Wolves were popular shapes for human souls or helping spirits. So in that way, wolves were Gandhar. Especially witches in uh, Old Norse tradition and other Northern European traditions were believed to appear in the shape of wolves or to ride wolves. Now you might think that appearing in, that appearing in the shape of a super, supernatural being is, uh, is uh, something completely different from uh, riding that animal, uh, but that's a modern distinction not made in the traditions. So in, in, uh, in the old days or pre-modern times, people wouldn't distinguish between that riding the, the supernatural animal or, or being inside it. So if we now return to the meanings of Gunfur in Shetland and Orkney, I've bold-faced the two um, latest meanings. And then the next question is, how do these two meanings connect to the other? From Jacobson's example in the dictionary, it seems that he refers to what is known as a fylgja or hugr in, um, in Old Norse. And a fylgja or, or hugr would be a spirit that follows its human through life, slightly ahead of the human, and in that way revealing uh, the near future. So what happens to the fylgja when it's uh, seen by, by people who have special abilities, or if it's heard or noticed in some other way, what happens to the fylga will soon happen to the owner or the person 
uh, that the Fylgia is, is accompanying. Now, this Fylgia is usually seen as an animal, and that animal is the spirit that the sorcerer will send forth. The sorcerer will not send forth um, his um, or her spirit in the shape of in the shape of any animal, but usually only in the shape of the Fylgia animal. So we are back at uh, the wolf and the gander again. What then is the connection between the spirit animals and the bad weather um, and the northern Norwegian gunfire? We have to ask, well, uh, boldfaced here is the meaning of the Norwegian gunfire, a host of witches or evil spirits believed to ride in the air. And then we have to ask, what is a spirit? And here we see examples from around the world that um, the word for spirit is really a word for breath. And that's uh, the case in cultures all over the world. So the very idea of spirit is derived from breath. We breathe as long as we live, and when we stop, we expire, which means that our spirit is in the air as moving air, which is wind. So across Eurasia in ancient texts, as well as in later uh, folklore, a very common idea is that unusual wind, unusual wind is the spirit of a mind or, or the mind of a sorcerer. For example, if you throw a knife into a whirlwind, um, that knife hurts the sorcerer at home. In Old Norse, um, as an example of this idea, in Old Norse, a, sor a poet, sorry, a poet could refer to refer to uh, a gale as the mind of witches. This means that a person's double and a ghost, which is usually a spirit that has left the body, and a host of spirits riding in the air, and a wolf riding or wolf running across the sky, are closely related. What to us appears to be completely different things may have been different sides um, to the same thing to the Old Norse and other pre-modern peoples. In a historical perspective, a 21st century Western understanding of reality is an anomaly. The Old Norse texts will always uh, constitute the core of our knowledge of um, Old Norse culture. Therefore, obviously, a student of Old Norse uh, culture must focus on those texts. But now, they've been studied intensively by scholars for more than two centuries. So it's limited how much more information, how much new information we can get out of them. In this situation, I believe we should try to supplement the Old Norse texts with other information, for example, in the way that uh, I've done here because other valuable information does exist. In some cases, terms like gunfer uh, turn out to be uh, cultural fossils that can tell us about beliefs that existed when the terms were formed <coughs> in medieval times or even earlier. And um, in such cases, they can increase our understanding of Old Norse beliefs. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>